This is a big night for us. This program that you're watching tonight happens to be our 3,000th show. Oh. And that was the extent of our celebration. That was it. <laughs> We're, our 17th anniversary is on Sunday, which is crazy. So much has happened over the last 17 years. I grew a beard. <laughs> oh, the Hatchimal I discovered in our parking lot blossomed into a fully grown, adorable man. <laughs> Happy number 3,000, Guillermo. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Guillermo, uh, is there anything you would like to say to America on this special occasion, our show, our 3,000th show? Uh, thank you for watching the show, everybody. And uh, I wish my Uncle Frank were here. <laughs> and thank you, Jimmy. I, I wish you. he was here, too, and I want to just say that he was my Uncle Frank. Not yours, but I'm happy to share him with you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody. By the way, it was... Thank, thank you, Jeremy. I, I can't even remember what it was like doing the show without you. You know, I was going through some things today, and I happened upon some reviews of our first show. <laughs> we, <laughs> we premiered on January 26, 2003, after the Super Bowl. It was a Sunday night. A lot of people were watching, and these are the reviews I woke up to the next morning. <laughs> Casey, you, you want to hear these? Or okay, here we go. From the Hollywood Reporter, you expect that with any show, particularly one broadcast live, there are going to be little glitches and technical flubs, and in that respect, Kimmel didn't disappoint. <laughs> what is harder to overlook was the aimlessness of the entire production, <laughs> the disorganization of the host, and the overall lack of anything remotely resembling humor. <laughs> It's been reported that Kimmel has a budget for writers, but nothing in the premiere indicated any had been hired. <laughs> All right, well, in fairness, that's it. that was just one opinion. Let's see what Variety thought. Variety says, Kimmel at every turn appeared unprepared. <laughs> that's bad, right, to be unprepared? And the paper of record, the failing New York Times said, perhaps... No late-night television show should be too exciting. Its viewers, after all, are presumably hoping to drift off to sleep shortly. <laughs> but the producers of the ABC talk show Jimmy Kimmel Live have taken that notion too far. <laughs> <laughs> we took it for 3,000 shows. Uh... <laughs> I didn't... I hated them at the time, but... The reviews were totally right. I don't know how we're still on the air. You know, 3,000 shows ago, Donald Trump wasn't even on The Apprentice yet. He was still doing Pizza Hut commercials. And now he's the star of a very popular impeachment trial, which started today in the United States Senate. All, all the senators, all 100 of them, took an oath swearing impartial justice, even though Majority Leader Mitch McConnell openly has admitted he is not an impartial juror and has been coordinating everything he does with the White House. He also proposed a crazy schedule that would have given each side 24 hours over two days, which would have meant the arguments would go on well into the night when nobody was awake to see them. People online started calling him Midnight Mitch yesterday. <laughs> Midnight McCon artist, Midnight, Midnight McCoverup, Putin's little Mitch, everything you can imagine. <laughs> McConnell reportedly wants to get the trial wrapped up in 10 days so Trump can take a victory lap at his State of the Union address on February 4th. Unless, the, under the uh, rules going forward, the trial won't even begin until 1 p.m. every day, which seems a little bit late, but in fairness, that is how long it takes Senator McConnell <laughs> to get to the Senate floor. He's, especially if he stops to nibble some lettuce along the way. But the big question is whether or not the Senate is going to call witnesses. McConnell wants no witnesses because, you know, witnesses are the ones who saw the crime, so no good can come a hear it from them. <laughs> he and his fellow Republicans keep saying that they're following the template established in the Clinton impeachment trial, even though this trial is very different. Bill Clinton, for, Bill Clinton had sex with one person. Donald Trump screwed, screwed a whole country. <laughs> it was and is expected to be a, a partisan affair. Chuck Schumer, the Democrat in charge, proposed uh, three amendments that got shot down. One of them to ask the White House 
for documents. The Republican majority voted against that. Then he proposed a second amendment to subpoena documents from the State Department. That also got nixed by the Republicans, as did the third. Their hope is to have as little evidence introduced as possible. Trump's lawyer, this guy Pat Cipollone, said, it's ridiculous Democrats want to call witnesses and claim that witnesses in the hearing in the House were threatened. And he's right, they were, witnesses were threatened by Donald Trump. He threatened the witnesses on Twitter while they were testifying. But I don't blame these Trump lawyers for trying. They don't really have much of a defense. I mean, what are they gonna say, nuh uh I mean, one of, <laughs> one of Trump's other lawyer, Jay Sekulow, all he was left with, the defense-wise, was this. What happened in the past, we should just ignore. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> right. O.J. is at home going, I agree with that. I really... Trump's defense team isn't even denying that he did what he's accused of. They just say it doesn't rise to the level of impeachment, which is like Jeffrey Dahmer arguing it didn't rise to the level of cannibalism. <laughs> so this afternoon, Trump tweeted, read the transcripts for this is the 35th time he's tweeted. Unfortunately for him, we did read the transcripts. That's why he's on trial right now. <laughs> and the truth is, these Republican senators who all voted against subpoenaing the documents from the budget office, these are the documents that likely would prove that Trump ordered them to withhold the money that was supposed to go to Ukraine. They don't care about evidence. They know he's guilty. The fact that Donald Trump did this is as clear as Donald Jr.'s head. That's why they don't want you to see any more evidence. And if you have a problem with that, which you should, no matter what side you're on, the best thing you can do is vote. Go to vote.gov and use this mockery of our democracy <laughs> to motivate yourself and others to register to vote. And in the meantime, if the small consolation, these senators are going to be locked in that room for quite a while. They are not allowed to leave the chamber during the trial. Attendance is mandatory, and they're not allowed to bring phones or electronic devices in. With one exception, Ted Cruz will be provided with an iPad so he can quietly watch porn, but that's it. <laughs> Nobody else. The senators are also not allowed to speak to each other, so they have to pass notes, and they're only allowed to drink water or milk. <laughs> <laughs> The same rules I have for my five and two year old children. <laughs> Why do I feel like Vice President Pence had something to do with the milk rule? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a, um, there's a conservative po political action committee called American Action Network that's been running these commercials in swing states starring a suburban teacher and a ho and housewife named Stacy. And Stacy is so disappointed with her local representatives focus on impeachment, she felt she had no choice but to speak out. The only problem is Stacy is actually an actress who somehow simultaneously lives in New York, New Jersey, Nevada, Iowa, Utah, Pennsylvania, New Mexico, Maine, and Virginia. There's so many issues they should be working on. It's so disappointing. I just wish Max Rose would let us decide the elections and get to work on the issues that matter. There's so many issues they should be working on. It's so disappointing. I just wish Andy Kim would let us decide the elections and get to work on the issues that matter. I just wish Susie Lee would let us decide the elections. I just wish that Abby Finkenauer would let us decide the elections. I just wish Ben McAdams. I just wish Matt Cartwright, Anthony Brindisi, Jared Golden, Elaine Lurie, Abigail Spanberger. I just wish that Sochil Torres Small would let us decide the elections and get to work on the issues that matter. Yeah. <laughs> and better name's not even Stacy. Probably. It's probably Olga from Omsk or something. And while all this is going on, the president is in Switzerland for the World Economic Forum in Davos. Why we let them leave the country while he's on trial, I don't know. He's clearly a flight risk, but they did. And uh, the president isn't letting the impeachment get him down. Today, he used his time at the podium to tell his fellow world leaders just what they wanted to hear, that America is winning like never before. We're continuing to work on things that you'll be hearing about in the near future that even today, sitting here right now, you wouldn't believe it's possible that we have found the answers. You'll be hearing about it, but we have found answers to things that people said would not be possible. Right, I know. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, we need to go come up with that. He doesn't realize he's the thing we didn't think was possible. <laughs> he also said that when it comes to climate change, we should stop being so negative and embrace optimism, which is great. Thanks, 73-year-old man. What are you worried about? I'll be dead in 20 years. Be optimistic. He did announce that the United States will join an initiative to plant more trees, part of they're trying to plant a trillion trees, which is positive. Although, why do I suspect most of those trees will be part of the landscaping at the Trump International Golf Resorts? 
<laughs> you know, according to a new poll by CNN, a slight majority of Americans, 51% of Americans, say the Senate should remove Trump from office. This impeachment is probably going to turn out to be the biggest political story of our lives. But I wonder how closely people are following it. So this afternoon, we went out to the street and we asked people, how, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We asked people how they voted on Trump's impeachment today. Now, only senators get to vote on that. But did that stop people from claiming they voted? They went to the ballot box today? Let's find out in a new impeachment edition of Lie Witness News. We're talking today about the big impeachment vote against President Trump. How did you vote? Did you vote to impeach or not to impeach? Um, I voted to impeach. What were the lines like at your polling place? Uh, they were actually not as long as I thought they would be, unfortunately. <laughs> Have you voted in presidential impeachments in the past? First time. And how did it feel? I think it felt empowering to speak my voice. And what would you tell people who haven't gone out to vote yet today? Look right in there and tell them. Your vote is your voice. You got to get out there and speak your mind. How are the lines at your polling place today? Uh, pretty packed. Oh, yeah, busy. Pretty, pretty busy out there. And how did you vote? Did you vote for the impeachment or against um, the impeachment? I voted against the impeachment. Against the impeachment. Yeah, yeah. Everybody right. needs a second chance, and we all make mistakes. What would you say to people who haven't yet gone out and voted on the impeachment today? Um, I tell them. Uh, your vote counts, I guess, you know. Uh, they, even in fictional elections? Even in fictional elections. How did you vote on the impeachment vote today? Did you vote for impeachment or against it? I vote against it. And did you do a mail-in vote? No. You voted out here? I think so, yeah. So how did you guys vote on the impeachment? Did you vote to impeach the president or not impeach him? Uh, not to impeach. Not to impeach. You voted to not? Nah. Did you go to your polling place or did you just text your vote to McConnell? Um, I guess I just texted McConnell. Texted McConnell? <laughs> yeah. For the people who didn't bother to text their vote to Mitch McConnell, let them know how important their vote is. Well, your voice matters now. Donald Trump can save this nation. If you don't vote now to keep Donald Trump in office, you know, this nation is on a rise, so... Yep. Make your voice heard. Uh, vote who you, uh, who's the best person out there, and uh, we'll see where this election goes in that. And Mitch McConnell? See what you see, send back, boy. And you guys are the future, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. Your voice got to be heard, everything in that. Oh, uh, Eagle Scouts. Yep. We are the next leaders of this nation. Okay, before you go, let me hear the official Eagle Scout call. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Scouts. <laughs> Hey, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season in a fun way. Buy my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and drew it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. Or watch another gaming video and don't help kids. It's up to you.